Hi, welcome to our lesson on email templates. In this lesson, we'll be covering the following. The value of a good template, how to build an effective template, and how to update your Shopify store's notification emails. First, the value of a good template. As an agency, the first step after the initial setup is addressing a master email template for our client. There are a few reasons why we do this. Consistency, efficiency, and deliverability. Let's talk about each one of those. Well, let's actually talk about consistency and efficiency together. They go together hand in hand. When utilizing a template as a starting point for all of your emails, you're not only cutting down on the time you might need to spend in building each email from scratch, but you're also maintaining all of your brand standards so that each touch point with your subscribers reinforces your branding and is immediately recognizable. I've seen brands that might change their logo from time to time. Some may change their color scheme on a seasonal basis. It can really get rather confusing and it can put some people off. People are increasingly distrustful of online marketing and the more consistent you can be in how you engage with your subscribers, the more trust and ease you can bring to the dynamic which translates directly to fewer unsubscribes and spam complaints, higher click rates, and better deliverability. Which is a perfect segue into discussing deliverability. So I consider there to be three main pillars to effective email marketing. Deliverability, openability, and clickability. To give a holistic picture, let's start at the end. You might have an amazing website with incredible product at an unbeatable offer, but no one is going to make to your site if they can't find a link within your email or if the offer isn't clear and compelling. That's clickability, directing your email recipient with a clear and engaging message that will compel them to click. Now let's take a step back. You may advise the best looking and most compelling email in the history of digital marketing. Congratulations. But if no one opens that email, who cares? Having effective subject lines that grab the recipient's attention without being clickbait or a disappointment once they open the email, that's openability. Okay, now to bring it home, deliverability. If that beautiful email of yours has the most clever subject lines, it won't make a bit of difference if your emails are going to the spam folder or aren't successfully delivered at all. It's incredibly important to understand the basics of deliverability across the board to know how to structure your emails and how to build your strategy in line with best practices. After all, if you compromise your deliverability, everything else becomes a moot point. So what can you do to ensure you're successfully delivering your emails to subscriber inboxes? Check out the link for Klaviyo's help documentation, which is a great guide to demystify deliverability. However, as it pertains to this discussion on email templates, there are a few key factors to consider. Don't use image-only emails. Always use some text. Note that you can use image alt text if you ever are using all imagery, or if you're graphically laying out any text, use that alt image section. Otherwise, all imagery can appear like spam to inbox providers because fishers often use this tactic. Don't include numerous links to domains not associated with your site. Links to external domains are often also used by fishers, so this can trigger spam filters. Don't use third-party URL shorteners. And incorporate as much personalization as you can. Use variables to dynamically pull in a recipient's name so emails look less like a mass send. With all of that in mind, let's see how to go about building an effective email template. First, we need to make sure that we have all of the relevant prep work in place. We need to be sure that we have all of our brand standards, our logo, our color palette, and fonts. Klaviyo provides you with a few options for putting together your emails. You can use text only, which in some instances might be a great option to have a very personal, intimate message like one directly from a brand founder to the customer. You also have the option to build your emails using HTML. This may be a good option if you're migrating an email from another platform where you're able to export it as HTML. However, building an email in HTML is probably going to make things needlessly difficult on most people. Lastly, there's the drag and drop email builder. This is far and away the quickest way to effectively build your emails. Let's navigate to the email templates section. You can see there are different options to get started. You have pre-made templates you can use for starting points or inspiration. or you can see some basic templates to build upon. You can really kind of choose your own adventure. So let's dive in and start building. 
you simply drag and drop the different types of content blocks into your email. Within your style section, you can set some global styles. Within each content block, you also have the block style section to refine the styles on that particular block. Take some time to get acquainted with the different content blocks and how the settings work. One content block that can be extremely useful is the product block. You can use this content block to display specific products in your email, or you can create data feeds to pull collections of multiple products. Clavio's data science team has had a hand in allowing you to have a lot of different controls over certain product recommendations and other unique settings to tailor the experience with products based on the recipient's purchase history as well as popular products from other customers. Let's navigate to the data feed section within the account. And here you can see a new arrivals data feed and bestsellers data feed, which have already been set up. And these are pulling directly from collections within Shopify. As you're building, you'll notice that when you hover over a content block that you can choose to duplicate content blocks or select the star to save them for later use within this template or templates in the future. It's also worth noting how you can toggle to mobile view and simulate that viewing experience. One important block setting you will find is how to make some blocks visible on either desktop or mobile only. It can be a bit tricky at times, but allows you more control on the appearance for different device types. There are a few key aspects to consider when building any email, so it's wise to make sure you approach your email template with these in mind. First, be clear and concise, plain and simple. I see a lot of brands overthinking it. Sure, you want your emails to look great and be engaging, but they're not a work of art to be hung on a wall and admired. They are messages that are meant to persuade your subscriber into taking a specific action. Don't impede the flow of traffic. Let the form follow the function, so be wary of too much content and avoid anything that will cause any excessive amount of scrolling. Try to only incorporate a single topic of, or message within an email. If you see things venturing off topic, it might be better suited to be broken up in separate emails. Along the same lines, always make sure your emails have a call to action. Like I said, the email is serving a specific purpose. So make the action you want the user to take to be clear. Ideally, you only want to have a single call to action, keeping things simple and directed. Now, there may be instances where you do need to have additional calls to action. If there is more than a single call to action, have a primary call to action with secondary, less prominent calls to action. It's often recommended for the tone of your emails to convey a sense of urgency. Your emails become far more compelling when you appeal to the fear of missing out. Now, don't get too carried away and seem ingenuine, but use your discretion to be effective. Personalization is something we touched on moments ago in the very cursory discussion of deliverability. Including subscriber first names with a dynamic variable is something that has data supporting the effectiveness on user behavior. Incorporating dynamic personalization variables is an easy way to make your emails more unique and engaging and avoid them from sounding sterile, prefabricated, and mass-produced, all of which are things that tend to put subscribers off. You can find Clavio's documentation on personalization variables in the link provided. As you can see here, I'm able to simply type a shortcut and I have the variable for first name. As an agency, since we set up and carry this out over and over again, we have some of these variables saved in an app called Text Expander, which is designed to help increase productivity by saving snippets of information that can be inserted with keyboard shortcuts like a macro. That way, we only need to remember the shortcut and not the longer, complicated text. 
you might find it to be helpful in your business. A word of caution, however, when you utilize a first name variable, for instance, you'll want to be sure you are collecting the data in your signup forms. Otherwise, it might not make sense to even attempt to use that sort of personalization in your email. Also, always include a default to fall back on. This way, if you don't have the user data, it will always have a default instead of appearing blank. You may want to try incorporating your brand's custom fonts into emails. And this can be a bit tricky since several inbox providers do not render them properly, causing them to fall back to a default WebSafe font. Also, your custom font will not be available in the drop-down menu within the email builder. And custom fonts are not supported in several of the blocks, such as button blocks, product blocks, and header link blocks. However, it bears mentioning here if this is something you do want to try. The process may differ slightly depending on where the font is hosted, whether it's a Google font, Adobe font, or otherwise. In any case, you'll add a bit of code within a text block in your email template. Be sure to use the source toggle to enter HTML and paste the code from Clavio's documentation, which we've linked. Then you'll set the specific settings for the font assigning as you wish, the H1, H2, H3, etc., paragraph text, and so on. You'll also want to set your WebSafe default as a fallback. For all of the details, see the link for the help documentation from Clavio to guide you through the process. So let's touch on dark mode, and I'll begin by saying that it's a complete wildcard and can be a cause of great frustration. I know it has been for me. Since dark mode first emerged, the rate of adoption has been pretty significant. Due to the multitude of apps and devices on which users receive emails, it's a bit of a misnomer to not pluralize it as dark modes, as there isn't any standard or consistent manner in which they all render your emails. The way iOS dark mode renders your emails on the Gmail app as opposed to Apple Mail is completely different, for instance. And when you start to get into it, it can get really crazy. You have Android phones, desktop operating systems, all of the different email inbox providers, their apps, how they behave on browsers as opposed to their standalone apps, how they may open from social media apps like Instagram, and on and on. It's a lot to consider. Needless to say, test your emails as best you can. That's a rule that applies not only to dark mode. Make sure you test on different device types and email inbox providers as much as you can. However, here are a few pointers for combating the ills of dark mode. Due to the way some dark modes function, you might want to use transparent backgrounds, although sometimes this may work against you. Some dark modes will invert the background color and can wreak complete havoc on what you thought were your brand standards. Like I mentioned, test as many scenarios as possible. Optimize your logo and social icons. Also, if you have a dark logo, you may want to update it to have a stroke of white, for instance, on the outside to ensure it remains visible if colors do get inverted and you end up with a dark logo on a dark background. The same goes for social icons or other graphic elements you might have included in your email. Text is always much more predictable. Black text will invert to white and vice versa. If you're looking for more predictability, it might be a good idea to rely more heavily on text if you're overly concerned about how your images and colors might be rendered in dark mode. Lastly, it's a much heavier lift, but it is completely within the realm of possibility that you could collect subscriber preferences and optimize emails with different versions based on those preferences. It's definitely a considerable amount of work, but it can certainly be done. Long story short, unfortunately, there isn't a magic bullet for optimizing emails in dark mode. You can't please everybody all the time, and that certainly is the case here with all the different scenarios for dark mode. It either takes a lot of work, or you can resign yourself to hoping users will abandon options that make emails look bad. After all, chances are that if you're struggling to get your emails to look good in dark mode, you're not alone. I mean, if I'm using an operating system and app that make emails look bad, I'm probably more likely to switch my settings or switch the app rather than unsubscribe from a particular email list. But then again, I could be a bit biased. Now let's switch gears and talk about your brand's notification emails. These include transactional emails such as your order confirmation, shipping confirmation, and order refund emails, all of which come directly from Shopify, not your Klaviyo account. Having these emails adequately branded is an area I really often see skipped or missed from so many companies, and yet these are crucial communications from your brand directly with your customer. Often these are left as the Shopify default or have just minor tweaks that are done within Shopify. However, even the modifications that you can do within Shopify are limited or difficult unless you are proficient in HTML. 
It bears mentioning that it is possible to send transactional emails from Klaviyo, but for these it really isn't necessary. In any case, we'll walk through how to update these Shopify notification emails to match the emails you're sending from Klaviyo so you have consistent, elevated branding. First, it's really handy to use the saved blocks feature on your email template. Go through your email template and save the different elements that will apply to all of your notification emails, such as header and footer elements. Next, within the email template section of your account, select the Create Template button and then choose Shopify Notification Templates. Now, one by one, you can select them, name them accordingly, and choose to create. You've now populated the default, which contains all of the variables specific to Shopify, so content will dynamically populate correctly. Now, carefully replace each block with your saved blocks in order to apply your correct styles. You may also need to update your global settings in the Styles section. Once you have your Shopify notification template designed, you can export the template as HTML. You'll want to do this step after you've upgraded to a paid plan in Klaviyo. Otherwise, you'll have a Klaviyo watermark at the bottom of these emails. We'll note in a later lesson when it makes sense to carry this out. But you'll just copy the HTML and navigate back to your notification settings in Shopify. Paste the HTML and you're all set. Klaviyo doesn't have templates for every Shopify notification, but many of the key email notifications are accounted for. Repeat these same steps for each notification email. Note that in some cases, there may be some slight differences in the naming conventions between Shopify and Klaviyo. There also may be a bit of spelling and punctuation to correct here and there. So let's recap all that we covered in this lesson. We covered the value of a good template lies in consistency, efficiency, and deliverability how big a factor deliverability can be. We also covered how to build an effective template with the email builder. We covered some pointers on adapting to dark mode. And we also covered how to update Shopify notification emails. In our next lesson, get ready, we'll be discussing the automated customer journey with signup forms and flows.